So Harrison Fry, 2008, or 1980, he decided that uh, he figured out how the spine moved. It wasn't published until, I think, 1945. But Friot's laws would say a type one, uh, a type, type one mechanics or a type one lesion is where the spine, when in neutral, so neither, infle neither inflection or extension, so idling between, where the facet joints are idling between flexion and extension, that uh, when the spine, as in a group of three or more um, vertebrae, when you side bend to one side, so let's say I side bend to the left, it's my spine would, would uh, rotate contralaterally. So it would side bend left and rotate right. So that would be, if I looked at maybe uh, T4 to T8, then let's say they were all um, on palpation, I could tell that T4, the transverse process of T4, T5, T6, T7, T8 were all closer to the surface, shallower, harder end feel, and um, wouldn't press into the skin. And on the right side, they were deeper and would move more easily. So what would that be? Yeah. T4, T8. Flat rotation, right? Yeah, so we would designate that T4, neutral, because it rotated left right. and side bent right. So that's Friot's first law, okay, uh, for a, um, but you, your first protocol is probably a muscle energy technique. Then a type two, type two uh, dysfunction, or type two uh, lesion, in fr according to Friot's law, or second law, would state that it's a, a segment, a spinal segment, so two vertebrae, that they would, when they side bend to one side, when they rotate to one side, they would side bend to the, excuse me, to the same side. So let's go again, we'd say T4 and T5, so we'd call it T4. The designation relates to the one on top, or the superior one. So we find that when we're, the, person, the patient's either seated or prone, and you go to T5, and you find that the transverse process of T5 is shallow, meaning it's close to the surface, it's a hard end feel, and it won't move very well. And when I go to the right side of T5, it's soft end feel, it's deeper, and it's able to move. So it means it's naturally rotated to the left. So T5 is rotated to the left, and it's named by the ease of motion, so that's the way it wants to go. So it wants to go this way, rotation to the left. So we know it's, it's a spinal segment, it's two, so we know by process of elimination that it's rotated left, that it's also side bent left. So now we've identified a spinal lesion. Okay, so we've said, um, we've said T5, rotated and side bent left or some people say t5 rotated left side bent left so that's our that's our spine that's our uh, that's that's how we've named it okay so now what do we have to figure out <laughs> yeah so spinal it'll be an extension it'll either get worse or better in extension or flexion whereas the type one is neutral it's like the spine is idling it's neither in flexion or extension idling between flexion and extension so the joints are neither open or closed this one now, T5, T6, it's, we know it's rotated and side bent to the left. Now we want to find out if it's, a, if it's an extension or flexion lesion. So what, what do we do? We get the person to extend and flex. So let's say for this purpose that the, part that the patient is seated, I get them to flex. You're looking for the position that it gets better in. That's the ease of motion in this case. And where it gets worse is the barrier. So the one that it gets better is how we're going to name the dysfunction. So, so let's say T5, T6 is uh, rotated side and left. I get the patient to flex and it gets worse. Got it? So it gets worse like that. So um, we know that that's the barrier. We can by process of elimination know that it's an extension lesion. We will get them to go into extension maybe, go into extension. So when they come into, when they go into flexion, it goes like this. And when they come into extension, it normalizes, it becomes more, more symmetrical. So we know that it's now T5, T6, extension, rotated and side bent, left. It's, 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 it's tricky. It takes time to, you need to go over this and over it. And better to use, a, use a, a 3D model. Some people are 3D learners. I'm a bit of both, as I said. I like to kind of read it and then get my hands on it and get your hands on people. And if you're, pra you're practicing with each other, okay. So, next thing I do, this is probably a long video, <laughs> you can close this one, I'm going to talk